If you're trying to figure out if somebody has very strong narcissistic tendencies and they're far down on that spectrum in narcissism, there are multiple things that we can watch for. You know, we talk about they have a real high need to be in control and they're not empathetic people. They're exploitive, they're manipulative, they're entitled. They really think a little bit too highly of themselves. They have to be superior. They're very thin skinned. All of those are elements of narcissism. But then if there's one ingredient that you really want to watch for that says that you're truly dealing with a narcissist, and we might call this a ground zero type of ingredient, it's simply this. They refuse to take responsibility for personal and relational difficulties, plain and simple. How many of you, including myself, make mistakes and do things wrong or, or have some things that just didn't go right inside our relationships or in our emotional reactions? And those of us who are responsible will say, I own it. I did it. It happened. What can I do to change? Narcissists, though, make excuses. Well, the reason it happened is this. Narcissists will blame shift. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not my fault. It's somebody else. Narcissists will go into hiding or they'll, uh, you know, they'll go into denial. They'll defend themselves. Anything but say, I take responsibility for who I am. Now, I want you to think about how many times that you've dealt with that individual and they've said, you know, I have some, some real soul searching I need to do. Narcissists don't think that way. Now, I want to go through several different key elements that are a part of that responsible reaction to emotional and relational difficulty. And I want you to see if any of these match pitch with the narcissist that you deal with. First, in order to take responsibility for yourself, you need to establish your own belief in your capacity to change. Now, little children don't have the capacity to, to, to uh, go all the way into responsibility yet because they're little children. You know, they, they have to be taught right versus wrong. But at some point in an individual's uh, development, we cross over what we might call into the age of accountability, where you're old enough now, and whether it's eight or 18 or 22, I don't know what it would be, but at some point in your life, you're old enough to say, I have the capacity for change. I have the capacity to uh, make adjustments and I need to go ahead and take advantage of that and lean into it. Narcissists, it's like they're still back in that toddler uh, time. They, 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 they're just kind of uh, uh, bumping into one irresponsibility after another, almost in an oblivious kind of way. And it's almost as though they deny the fact that they have passed into the age of accountability. No, you need to be accountable, not me though. Uh, in addition, number two, when you are a responsible person, you seek to control things from the inside out. In other words, you know that you have certain elements that require self-restraint, uh, that, uh, that you uh, need to have insight and internal strength. You want to have a sense of knowledge and awareness and wisdom that you operate with. That's what I mean when I say you control things from the inside out. It's like, you know, I, I need to think through who I am and why I do things. Narcissists, they control things from the outside in. I need you to act correctly. I want you to do this. I want this to be uh, different. And if this hadn't happened, uh, then I would be okay. But if this happens, I'll be all right. And so you notice that they go heavy into that bossy or critical or forceful or demanding kind of way because uh, they don't have an internal locus of control. It's all external. By the way, it sets them up to be highly codependent in the way that they do life. Uh, in addition, number three, when you have a responsibility, a sense of responsibility, you're just plainly honest about yourself. For example, if you have anger issues, you say it. Yeah, I know sometimes I don't manage my anger correctly. I need to look at that. Or it might be that you have a problem with insecurity and it shows up in the way that you react to people. I need to look at that. And, and I know that sometimes my insecurity takes me in places I really don't want to go. Or it could be that there was a big blunder or a mistake. And in honesty, you say, yeah, that was me. I, I, the other person may not have done everything I wanted, but I participated. That's honesty. And, and it, uh, you want to have a sense of openness and it leads to a sense of accountability. That's what responsible people do. 
how many narcissists do you know that take that kind of pattern? And it's like, no, I'm not gonna be honest about it. If I have anger or insecurity or defensive and all that, it's not what you think it is and probably it's your fault anyway. A fourth element that is required is uh, you have to have a well-developed value system or we might say a moral code. Narcissists have rules and regulations there are certain things you're supposed to do. There's supposed to things you better not say, or uh, you have to manage it this way. But when it comes to having a well-developed value system, uh, they don't really uh, have a, a well-conceived uh, notion of the whys. Uh, um, for example, if I have a problem with anger, my value system says, you know, I can I can manage my anger in such a way where I still treat other people with respect. That, that, that's that's part of my value system. The narcissist, it's like, well, if you have anger, you're supposed to do this and you shouldn't have done that. And that's about as far as their thinking goes. They don't go deep into the why and the meaning and the morality of what they do. It's just simply surface. Um, uh, narcissists are known for heavy black and white, all or nothing thinking, and that's it. A fifth element that's part of uh, a responsible life is you accept guilt and shame when necessary. Now, we, we talk about how narcissists love to give shame and put guilt onto you, and sometimes you need to learn how to sidestep that simply because uh, that's just one of their manipulative ploys. But let's suppose you have done something wrong. Well, speaking personally, I want to feel guilty, not, not long, uh, in, in the sense that it's a restorative kind of emotion. When I feel guilt or shame, it's like, oh, I can do better than that, and I know I need to do better than that then it becomes something that makes me a better person. And then once uh, that function is done, then I get to move on to something else. Whereas with narcissists, they have an odd relationship to guilt and shame. It's, it's a weapon that they use where they punish and pummel under in other individuals. Uh, that's not responsibility. That's their blame shifting side. Uh, in addition, uh, number six, when you have healthy uh, responsibility, you have ongoing learning and insightful uh, uh, plans that you maintain. I, I know that in my 60s now, I think differently than I did in my 50s. And then I thought differently from in my 40s and 30s and 20s. As you grow and age and you have more and more experiences, you, you hopefully can pull those insights together and say, I'm learning how to be a better person. And you see life as an ongoing growth process. It's not just get her done and, and let's just do things. But it's like, you know, for the rest of my life, I know that there are gonna be some things that I'm gonna to need to learn or I'm gonna to need to refine and adjust. What do you think about narcissists? Do they like to learn and adjust? And it's like, yeah, I need to learn how to tell you how to do things better and make you do things more out of the way I say it. I, I don't think I was strong enough. I'll twist your arm this way, different this way. It's about as far as they go. Uh, their sense of responsibility does not lead to that kind of ongoing insight. And then finally, number seven, when you have that good insight, or excuse me, when you have that good responsibility, you respect the rights of other individuals. Uh, when there is interpersonal strain and difficulty, you realize, you know, that other person, no matter what difficulty we might have had, you know, they're, they're struggling with their life too. I want to see if we can create a sense of togetherness and community as much as possible. Let's see if we can pool our resources so that uh, we're not working against each other, but there's a, a, an us a feeling of community that's there. Now, I put all these things out and say, that's what responsible people do. And when you engage with a narcissist, it's like, nope, I don't do that. I don't take responsibility for me. Uh, you have to be responsible to make me uh, feel better about my life. Let's underscore really strongly. Responsible people don't make excuses. Responsible people show up. Responsible people are loyal, but not dutiful about their loyalty. Responsible people genuinely want to know you and how they fit with you. Responsible individuals know when to lay down their ego. Responsible people are not afraid of words like, I was wrong, or please forgive me. Responsible people don't go around creating divisiveness. Responsible people don't create drama. Responsible people uh, are known for having steady emotions because they work at it. Responsible people don't gripe 
and criticize and complain excessively. Responsible people are consistent. Responsible people are disciplined. And most of all, responsible people are trustworthy. So if you're trying to figure out if this person that you're engaging with is narcissistic or not, watch how they respond when it's time for them to say, I have to take responsibility. Um, now, uh, with them, individual responsibility is fleeting at best. It's erratic. It's consistently inconsistent. And you know what? It's always someone else's fault, isn't it? I hope that you can decide, well, despite their tendency, I'm going to take my cues in an opposite kind of way, and I am going to be that responsible person. To me, that would be a very strong indicator that says you've got this narcissism pattern figured out and you're moving in the right direction. Now, I do hope that videos such as this give you good insight and awareness and some things to really concentrate on in your own personal life. Uh, if you've not already done so, I would encourage you to hit that subscribe button. It may be that you know that you need some counseling, and if you have someone in your general area that you could go to, I would encourage you to go do so and, and make sure that you're in a, a working uh, mode with regard to self-improvement. If you don't have someone, or if you'd rather have someone online, we've vetted a group that can help you in online counseling, and we have a link below uh, this video that can take you to that place. In addition, we have our websites, survivingnarcissism.tv, as well as drlescarter.com. We have links to our, our library, which takes to our books. We have online video workshops, a whole bunch of stuff down there, coffee mugs even. We need to be responsible. Uh, each individual uh, has their um, own combination of highs and lows, and those of us who grow, those of us who are trying to make a positive difference, take ownership of our humanity, and then we do something in a healthy way about it. That being the case, I'm hoping that you, as you lean into your responsibility, will be uh, someone that thinks communally. Uh, you think in ways of being a healing presence. And I hope that in doing so, you're able to consistently find your place of peace.